15 minute warning. still in the Thames estuary. Uh, I, said, I said this a few weeks ago that I think we're gonna have to fight for the finish. There's, there's just no easy miles in the Great British Swim. So um, as a team, just still a sense of, just gotta, gotta put this to bed, it's far from over. And, and I know that sounds weird because when you look on the map, it's, it's this, but, but this is it's still cold, um, it's still hard. So going back out, feels though Ross has become a part of our family and I think for him it probably feels though he's absorbed into a family that has helped everybody with the mental side of the challenge. You get to the point where in you know sort of an hour into it you've made a mile or two and you think okay we're on a rhythm here we're going but it still could come to a halt at that point and several swims did but it's not until you get to the end of each swim that you know that you've actually made it or if you haven't made it then what are you going to do to modify the plan and adapt? So that, that sort of relentless pressure goes right up to the to the very last swim. And we've got 1.87 miles to go. We've left ourselves one and a half miles, literally. It's one and a half miles is still a long way to swim for your average person. So I'm just packing up mine and Rossi's stuff and I'm going to go see him for the final swim. He's not the one after shave for ages. This is Ross's shaver, so we can't forget this for Sunday because the beard is going. Dad did genuinely think he was going to be home in like 60 days. It seems as though that's what he actually told me. And then I got the phone call to say it's going to be three months. And then I got the phone call to say, no, it's actually going to be five months. Ross always looks after himself and he handles himself fine. When he gets in the water at night time, that's when I worry about him just because at the end of the day, he's the one in that water and it's pitch black and there's just waves crashing all over him and all you can do is watch. That's where you feel a bit more helpless. Do you know what I can't wait for though? For him to wash his hair. <laughs> Obviously he's not had a shower in so long, has he, for like, what, 100 and something days? <laughs> his hair's a little bit um, sea ridden and a little bit greasy, so I just wanted to shampoo it. I said, oh, I'll buy you some face masks and he just drew the line at that, he won't do that. And welcome aboard the Hecate. We are here. We are ready for the Great British Swim. It's been happening for five months. Ross Edgley had a wonderful idea about six months ago. He thought he would set the world record to be the first person ever 
There he is, going past me, to ever swim around Great Britain. Oh. Are you excited to meet everyone? No, I, am. I feel bad. People were getting up at like one o'clock in the morning. I Fifteen minute oh, warning. I'm get suited up. Hold on. As you can see, Ross is in the water. We haven't quite finished yet, but today is the day where he will set the world record. Now the boats that you can see are Ross's friends and family. It's, it's so exciting, this whole build-up. I'm not sure he can hear everyone. And he's returning today to the location in Margate where he started 157 days ago. There's 300 swimmers that are going to be joining him. They're getting ready, they're in the water and they are on their way They've just met Ross, who swum on over to them. <laughs> I got so excited and when I saw everybody and the music was playing everyone was cheering I tried to run in and then I almost like stacked it and face planted the floor. I knew I'd get a little bit emotional but that one swimming with the 300 people for me showed why I love open water swimming because you, you go to like so many different sports and you say look you know November approaching winter it's cold on a beach do you want to come and swim in you know a mile with a guy you've never met and, and open water swimming everyone just goes yeah so crazy grateful I think because I spent 157 days at sea uh, just staring at the bottom of the seabed I had no idea that anyone would even you know right I honestly thought it would be me my mum and dad and, and, and Hester and a pizza like, and that would have been fine I like pizza I think Britain has such a history and heritage of amazing adventurers and explorers and um, I think to do that and, and document the whole thing is this live social media experiment it feels amazing
are you thinking shorter, round, well groomed shape, or do you want to stay feral? No, he's not. Oh, what is, I, I... <laughs> he's thinking he's having it off. Why? It. If I'm, look. it needs to be whipped off. No, because. You promise. <laughs> We've got beard oil. Just give me the shaver. No, but did you hear? It's got lime in it. Where's the underbutton? I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 24 hours since I finished in Margate. It was just me and the mayor. I was explaining, Gog was in here somewhere. Like, here we go. <laughs> Let them match your outfit. <laughs> you know, I gave her a hug and I was like, see you in 100 days. Oh, I'm late. <laughs> um, <laughs> so to come back and see the Great British Swim has gathered such momentum. It's hard to imagine like what 300 swimmers looks like. So I didn't see them first, I heard them. And that, that moment actually, right there, I thought, this is why I love open water swimming. This is why the Great British Swim has been so special. Oh, it was actually quite emotional. I got quite teary. So we started off just, just down at the beach there. Um, yeah, swam out, saw the boat, you know, everything that you've been, we've been tracking on social media. And then we're looking at Ross, Ross came up and orchestrated like a group hug. And then what blew my mind was, I was thinking, you know, can he actually still swim? Can he move his arms? I know it sounds silly, but someone's been in the water that long. And his grace in the water after so many days, is, it was just incredible. This country can feel very divided at the moment and actually swimming can really unite people. And what happened out there in the water really, really um, demonstrated that for me. So having done all of that, I think, OK, Ross, keep it together, keep it together. And then the matadors fly over the top as well. I was like, oh, you guys, you're kidding me. And they do a giant love heart. I was like, oh, no. And then the Royal Marines come as well, who, you know, where this is partly where it started, you know, with the Royal Marines down in Limpstone to, to St. Lucia. And then I know, having survived all of that without even crying, I know I've got my family and friends at the end. I'm like, oh, no. And then, yeah, get on land, see a trident. Amazing! Look at that! You don't have to swim around Great Britain to get one. <laughs> it's so strange looking back at the news and live feeds because I'm looking at it as a as a spectator. I'm like, that looks like a cool event. <laughs> I was handed a microphone. I think I said a few words. And I think people liked it. I don't know. There was a guy from America. <laughs> I was like, what? Why? <laughs> Why have you come to Mark? And he's just like, for the Great Britain. We go to work every day and you have... Uh, yeah, ups and, and downs, downs and you watch a guy like this and so uh, what he's accomplished and you think, man, if, sure if he can, if he can hang in there the entire time on a swim like this, you know, what could you do in your life? Selfie. It's been pretty great to watch. The Great British Swim has turned into a community and, 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 and I just kind of hope, like I said, that that community just continues to just like share stories. In a year's time, I would love it if somebody said, you know, oh, I just run my first 10K because of the Great British Swim. What happened over the 157 days wasn't a swimming lesson it was just this experiment in in like i said mental and physical fortitude it doesn't matter if you run swim cycle the principles are still the same but you know it sounds cliche nothing good ever came from your comfort zone and i think people watching the great british swim will say yeah you know if you get out of your comfort zone you get to see minky whales you get to see dolphins yeah you might get stung in the face by jellyfish as well but for all of the, the hardship, there's also a lot of privileges as well. <laughs> Hello? People are prodding my beard. <laughs> I want to keep it, but my girlfriend's very outspoken about it. She, she's threatening to shave me in my sleep. Hello? Yeah, how you doing? Definitely. You too, thank you. Oh, do you want a beard? I didn't even know! Sneaky. <laughs> she's happy with it. Is that enough off, Esther? Oh, no way. Get her off. Get her off me. Get off me. <laughs> Fear the beard. Oh, oh. You really get a comb for it now, can't you? Oh, it tickles. This is the great British comb. Oh, what in my eye? <laughs> Where's my goggles? Mate, <laughs> <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> Look at Esther's face. Look at her. Guys, it's been a crazy 24 hours back on land. Probably almost as crazy with all the media um, as 150 days at sea. I'm slowly getting my land legs back. It's just been amazing. And actually just kind of everything's being packed up. Kind of feels, kind of feels right that we're kind of closing the chapter on the Great British Swim.
And I'm just, I don't know what to say. I'm trying to keep this quite short because again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start filling up and I've managed to go this whole series uh, without crying. And so I want to keep that record. I just wanted to say thank you so much. This, this started out as something that I dreamed up and, and just thought, do you know what, is it possible? And, and along the way, we've, we've created such a community behind the Great British Swim. It never, ever felt like I was swimming alone. The Great British Swim was never an individual sport. It was a huge team effort. Um, thank you so much for the likes and comments. So that's it, guys. Um, there's no more episodes. Uh, you don't have to follow me on the Red Bull Tracker anymore. Um, and I'm gonna try and integrate back into society uh, with life on land. Um, you've been amazing. This has been The Great British Swim, and I've been Ryan Neck. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.